Freddie Mercury lived a very public life on tour with Queen. The Rock and Roll Hall of Famers were on television sets and performed live all across the world. But Freddie had many secrets that most fans don't know. Let's take a look at the things none of us know about Freddie Mercury. Everybody looks, looks at, at me on stage and they think that's how I am, like arrogant and, you know, that's the way I know. And when you look at me now, I'm quite boring, really. It might surprise you to learn that Freddie Mercury was born Farouk Balsara to his family in Tanzania. At the time, the country was called Zanzibar, and he moved to India before settling down in England, where he met Roger Taylor and the rest of Queen. During his time in India, Freddie relaxed in a variety of unique ways. He was a great table tennis player, but he was also a boxer. In these early formative years, Freddie practiced Zoroastrianism, which gave him moral foundation that guided him throughout his life. Freddie embodied one of the religion's mottos, good thoughts, good words, good deeds. Freddie's sister, Kashmira Cook said, I think what Zoroastrian faith gave Freddie was to work hard, to persevere, and to follow your dreams. Freddie's multicultural childhood heavily influenced his view on life and his music. He came from humble beginnings, which helped him create music that came from the heart and spoke to fans from all walks of life. Eventually, Farouk got the nickname Freddie, and then after he moved to England, he legally changed his name to Freddie Mercury. This next fact is almost unbelievable. Freddie was one of the most extroverted and outlandish performers of all time, but for most of his life, he was shy. Growing up away from his family at a boarding school in a foreign land had to be difficult for him. But even as he got older, he remained reserved in his personal life. Even as he gained fame through Queen, he still kept to himself when he could. Sure, he partied hard and had tons of hookups, but he only became close with a very select few people. In a way, Freddie seemed to live a double life. On one hand, he was a rock and roll party animal, and on the other, he was quiet and thoughtful. That's probably why he got along so well with John Deacon. While Freddie could flow between his introverted and extroverted sides, John only had that quiet side. Freddie and John could relate in a way the rest of their bandmates couldn't. For more proof of Freddie's quiet side, you can see how he rarely did any interviews with the media. It would be weird for someone who was always the life of the party to pass up a chance at more time in the limelight. Roger Taylor even said, in real life, nobody knew Freddie. He was shy, gentle, and kind. He was never the one he was on the stage. In fact, Freddie's shyness might have cost him some time on Earth. He avoided telling his bandmates in the media about his AIDS diagnosis for as long as he could. Near the end of his life, his bandmates and personal friends all knew, but the general public was left to speculate. His diagnosis wasn't really a secret since he looked more sickly over time and Queen shut down their touring, but had he announced it sooner, fans could have raised money to help him out and slow the progression of his disease. But on the flip side of Freddie's shyness was his rock star side. One night, he went to a Brooklyn disco club called the Gilded Grape that had a reputation for being a place for tough guys. Everyone told Freddie not to go, but he did anyway. Not long after he got there, a huge brawl broke out. People were destroying the bar, smashing chairs, and he even recalled that there was blood everywhere from all the fighting. He found Billie Jean King, a tennis star at the time, and he saved her from the brawl. Freddie and Billie then went back to Freddie's hotel where they shared dinner together. We all know Freddie Mercury has an incredible singing voice, but have you ever thought about just how amazing his talents really were? In 2016, research scientists took on the task of studying Mercury's voice. They found his speaking voice was a baritone, but much of his singing fell in the tenor range. That's two octave ranges. But he's been recorded singing as many as four octave ranges, which is crazy. Most people only sing in one or two octaves. The researchers also found Freddie's vocal cords moved faster than normal, with a vibrato almost two hertz faster than the average person. 
While Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson had a falling out over the king of pop's exotic pet llamas and monkeys, Freddie was a unique pet owner in his own right. Freddie was basically a crazy cat guy. At one point in his life, he had 10 cats living with him, and he even made a whole solo album about his cats called Mr. Bad Guy. The Queen song Delilah is also about his favorite cat with the same name. On top of singing odes to his cats, he would also call his house while he was on tour and talk to his cats over the phone. Freddie's friends said he would treat his cats like his kids. Freddie had a ton of unique interests too, including stamp collecting. Freddie was what's known as a philatelist, or a person who really, really loves stamps. Freddie began his collection before he was even a teenager, and his unique childhood meant he could collect stamps from a variety of unique postal locations. His collection was so vast and impressive, it's now on permanent display in the Postal Museum in London after the museum purchased it at an auction to the benefit of the Mercy Phoenix Trust, a charity dedicated to Freddie to help research HIV and AIDS. Freddie's collaboration with David Bowie is a classic, but Freddie and David were friends long before they entered a recording booth together. Before they made it big, they were already friends when they were both starting their music careers. Bowie was doing better than Freddie for a time, so David hired Freddie to be his roadie. Freddie would help build the stages and haul the gear to and from the stage. Freddie also had a brief gig as a life model for artists when he was studying art at Ealing Art School prior to joining Queen. The story goes that Freddie really wanted a new pair of Levi jeans, so he decided to pose for a drawing class to make some extra money. Of course, the promiscuous Freddie probably had a certain image in mind when he signed up, but it turned out the class was all elderly women. Freddie took his reserved side with him to the grave, where he asked for his final resting place to be kept secret. He only told his former lover and lifelong friend Mary Austin where he wanted to be buried. Freddie was cremated after he passed away, and Austin hid his ashes in her room for two years before sneaking out to bury them where Freddie wanted. When Freddie was in college, he found many of his favorite musical artists. Freddie loved Jimi Hendrix and Aretha Franklin. His own vocals were heavily inspired by Aretha Franklin's phrasing, while the guitar riffs he made were inspired by Hendrix's unique blend of blues and rock. He even had a Jimi Hendrix poster in his room. Maybe he looked at that poster when he was writing his most famous song. Queen's biggest hit, Bohemian Rhapsody, was conceived many years before Queen ever recorded it. Freddie began writing the hit single while he was still in college. One of Freddie's old friends from college remembered hearing Freddie play the opening notes for Bohemian on a piano. Back then, Freddie called it the cowboy song, but he was stuck on what verses would come after Mama Just Killed a Man. Can you believe all these amazing hidden facts about Freddie Mercury's life? What's your favorite fact about Queen's legendary singer? Let us know in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to catch the next one, and we'll see you next time.